This video is about differentiation and calculus and specifically about turning points which are also called max and min points. We've already spoken about how functions can be increasing or decreasing. When they're sloping down they're decreasing. When they're sloping up they're increasing. And here's what a tangent would look like on the decreasing side and here's how a tangent would look on the increasing side. But in between those two options, increasing and decreasing, we have a third option, the point at which the curve is neither increasing nor decreasing. At this point, its tangent is horizontal. And we know that if something is horizontal, if a line is horizontal, then its slope is equal to zero. So at these points, at these max and min points, slope is equal to zero. You can see here that I'm at the bottom of the curve. That's what I mean by min. I could just as easily have an n-shaped quadratic. And here's the tangent at the maximum point of that quadratic. And again, you can see that the slope of this tangent is zero. So whether it's max or whether it's min, at that turning point, the max point and the min point, the slope of the tangent is zero. And we know another way to say slope of the tangent, the slope of the tangent is just dy dx. And so we can use this piece of information to figure out exactly where this max and min point might be. Some functions have more than one turning point. For example, this cubic has a maximum point and it has a minimum point. So here's an example of how to go about a question like this. Find the turning point of f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3 and then figure out is it a max point or is it a min point. Step one is going to be to locate the point. Find out where the point is. And to do this, like we said a moment ago, we let dy dx equals to zero. Now, in this case, I won't call it dy dx. What might I be calling it instead? Okay, in this case, I'm going to call it f dash x. If you're uncertain about this, go back and watch the notation video to clarify. Okay, so f dash x just means I need to differentiate f of x. When I differentiate f of x, I'm going to get 2x minus 2. Now I need to let this equals to zero. And then I'm going to want to solve the equation. So I'll start by bringing the two across the equal sign, and then I'll divide by two to solve for x. So my solution for x is x equals one. Now let's just go back to the question for a second because it didn't just say find x, it said find the turning point. And so if I want to find the turning point, I have to get the y as well as the x. Okay, so how do I get y? Well, I'm just going to sub x back into my original function to get y. So I'm going to find f of 1. So f of 1 is just substituting 1 into the original function f of x. And then off to the calculator to evaluate. And we get a result of minus 4. So when x is 1, y is minus 4. So my turning point is 1 minus 4. I'm not quite finished yet though, I've found the turning point, but I don't know if it's max or min just yet. So step two is to identify the type of point, or find out what it is. To do this, we'll have to find the second derivative, d squared y over dx squared, or f dash dash x, and sub the x that we got in step one into this. So to find this f dash dash x, my second derivative, I just take what I got in the first derivative and differentiate it. So in this case, f dash dash x equals to 2. Now, it's not the 2 itself that's of use to me here. It's whether my result is positive or negative. Notice, by the way, I've written in sub x in, but there's no x's in this, so I don't need to fill anything in in this case. If there was an x at this stage, I would need to put my x value into my second derivative. If I just get a number, that's fine too. But like I said, what's really important here is whether my result is positive or negative. Clearly 2 is positive 2. And if I get a positive result at this second derivative stage, that tells me that I've got a minimum point. Conversely, if I got a negative result, it would mean that I had a maximum point. And now finally, I'm going to conclude. I'm going to write down the point and the type of point that it is. So my point is 1 minus 4 and it's a minimum point. This graph is actually the graph of the function in this question. 
you can see that it's got a minimum point at the point one minus four. Here's the tangent to put in. You can see the tangent is horizontal at this point. So it had a slope of zero. That's why our f dash x equals to zero was used in step one of the question. Now just to have a little bit of a reference to step two and why the second derivative is useful in figuring out what type of point we have. What the second derivative does is it tells us how the slope is going to change. So when we get a positive result for our second derivative, it tells us that our slope is going to go in a positive direction. It's going to increase next. And you can see that if I'm at my minimum point and I move on from it, well, my slope doesn't, does in fact increase. So that's what my second derivative is really telling me. It's telling me that I'm at, at the bottom and the only way for me to go is up. So a positive second derivative tells me I'm at the bottom and that as I move along my curve going in the direction, going to the right, that I'm going to be then sloping up. So here's a second example. Find the turning points of y equals x cubed minus 3x squared and state if each is max or min. Now just before we begin, just notice this is x cubed at the start. So it's letting me know that it's a cubic function, which would look something like this. And so I'm expecting that I'm going to get two answers, one max and one min. I'll follow the same steps as previously. Step one, I'll find out where the points are. So to do that, I'll let dy dx or f dash x equals to zero. This time the function is called y, so I need to find dy dx equals to zero. Okay, so what's dy dx? So dy dx in this case is 3x squared minus 6x. And now I let that equal zero. And now I want to solve this equation. Okay, so it's got an x squared at the start so I'm, and an x squared in the second term, so I'm going to have to do a bit of factorization to get my answer here. Just note, at this stage, if I've differentiated a cubic, I'm generally going to have a quadratic of some description, so that type of factorization might be necessary. This is a quadratic, but it's an easy one to factorize. I only have to take out common terms. So 3 is a factor of both of these numbers, and x is a factor of both of the variable terms. So I can factorize 3x out, and I'm left with x minus 2 in the bracket. Now, I didn't put a bracket around the 3x, but if you like, you can. And to get my two solutions, then I'm going to let each bracket equal to zero. So I'm going to get a result of x equals to zero. And I'm going to get a result of x equals to two. And I'm not surprised to get two different results here, because like I said a moment ago, we're dealing with a cubic, which has a max point and a min point. So now that I have the x part of both of those points, I have to get the y part of those points also. And to do that, I simply have to substitute my x values back into my original function. So I get my two solutions for y, y equals to zero and y equals minus four. And of course, don't forget, I want to put the x's and their respective y's together then to make my two points. So my two points are zero, zero and two minus four. So I know where the points are now. My next job is going to be to find out what kind of points each of these is. And of course, to figure this out, I need to find my second derivative. When I find that second derivative, I'll have to sub my x's in if possible. Just bear in mind, when you're getting your second derivative, you're always differentiating this dy dx line here at the top. So when I differentiate that, I get 6x minus 6. So I can see this time that I do have an x. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it, because in the previous question, I only had one turning point. So I didn't need to check multiple different x values. I only had the one x value. Here, however, I've got two different x values, and how would I check them both if I didn't have an option of subbing them in? That's what the x is letting me do. It's letting me check what's happening at this particular point, x equals to zero, by subbing it in. And it's also letting me check what's happening where x is equal to two, again, by subbing it in. So I've got x equals to zero, and I'm putting it into my second derivative, and then I'm working out my solution, which in this case is minus six. Now again, the 6 bit isn't really hugely important, it's the minus that's important. What this is telling me is that I'm at a maximum point. The negative is saying what's going to happen next is that the function is going to slope down. And you can see that that's true when you're at the maximum point, the only way to go is down. So when x is 0, I'm at a max. So I'll take this opportunity now to summarise for the point that x equals 0 is in, 
which is this point here, 0, 0. So 0, 0 is a max point. And next, I want to repeat this process for my other x value, x equals 2. So in this case, I'll get 6 times 2 minus 6, just subbing in this x equals 2 into my second derivative. And I get a result this time of 6, or plus 6 if you like. And again, it's the sign that's the important thing here. The plus is telling me that when x equals 2, I'm at a minimum point. So the reason for this is that if you're at the bottom, the only way to go is up. So what's going to happen next is that your function is increasing. It's sloping up if it's got a positive slope. So the plus means you're at the bottom and you're going to go up. That's how we know when we have a plus that we have a minimum point. And again now I'll just conclude by referencing the full point that x equals 2 is in and stating what type of point it is. So in this case 2 minus 4 is a minimum point. At this stage it's no harm to go back and reference the original question. It said find the turning points and state if each is max or min. So we've done that, we've found both turning points, and we've stated what type of turning point they are.